Oh, a bunch of people coming on. Okay. If uh, Katie, if you can just tell the audience that we'll just give it a minute. Okay. Wait, I think I'm stuck here. There we go. All right, we'll be right with you to start the webinar shortly. Okay, Katie, perhaps uh, you should get us started at three or two, I think. So. Okay, great. So I can start now? Yep. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, my name is Katie Watts, and I'll be presenting the webinar on writing an effective personal statement college essay hosted by UCEZ, where you have registered. Um, before we go ahead and get started with our webinar, I'm going to have Vinny Gupta explain a little bit about UCEZ and then we'll go ahead and, and get right to it. Vinny? Thanks very much, Katie, and thanks everyone for joining on this Sunday afternoon. We realize that attending these webinars, especially if you're a parent, attending these on a Sunday afternoon is a lot of commitment, so we thank you for that. Uh, before Katie goes into the primary topic for today, which is college essays, I just wanted to take a few minutes to introduce UC Easy to especially the people on the call that have not uh, attended our webinars before. And I promise to keep it short. Uh, UCEZ stands for University and College Admissions Made Easy. Even though we have UC in our name, our scope is nationwide and not just University of California. Now UCEZ was co-founded by me and a co-founder uh, because based upon our first-hand experience as first-generation immigrants with the college admissions process for our kids and the complete overwhelming feeling that we got, we decided to, to, to uh, start UC Easy to help older families, regardless of their financial background, regardless of which zip code they live in, we want to help all families with the rather complex college admissions process for U.S. colleges. Now, we have three different solutions. Two of them are completely free. That's a part of the social element of our business of giving back. And one of them is not free. So as I go down the three bullets that you see on the screen, the first one is Toolbox. So if you go to our site, we have a suite of free web applications that will offer simple guidance for the college admissions process. These are essentially web applications uh, with no human touch. And uh, a good example would be Organizer, which is essentially in a single place, you can see key dates for the major activities involved in college admissions, especially as it pertains to a junior and a senior. The second one is events, which are educational events like the one that you are on today. So we have these webinars, but we also have a bunch of on-site seminars, especially in California Bay Area. And these, or most of these are completely free. And the idea is that in a group setting, any family, however underprivileged, would be able to get access to an expert like Katie Watts to learn about college admissions. Lastly, union. Union is a network of college admissions experts. Katie Watts, today being an example, this network includes highly qualified, highly experienced, but most importantly, hand-picked experts that go through a very rigorous interview process before they are qualified to represent UCEZ. 
The idea with these college admission coaches or some people call them counselors is that they offer one on one coaching on different elements of college admissions to families. This coaching is done over online video and uh, you can buy their time either hourly basis or for a package. We will get into more of that detail later. So, but with that quick introduction, I'm going to ask Katie to introduce herself and to walk us through. Great. Thanks, Vinny. All right. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, next slide. I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. Let's see. Here we go. All right. So a little bit about me. Um, I have a master's in counseling and a PPS credential, which um, if you attend a public school in California, all of your school counselors have the same credential. And, and I am a a school counselor as well as a, a college counselor. Um, I've worked about 13 years as a high school college counselor in diverse high school settings, U.S. and overseas. Um, currently, I am in um, Incline Village, Nevada on the north shore of Lake Tahoe, if you're familiar with that area, and I'm working with a brand new um, startup high school, if you will, um, in the Truckee area. So it's, it's been an exciting year. Um, this is the first year I haven't had any seniors but we are ready to go for the college process in the fall I've been working with my juniors very very intensely this past year uh, I also have experience with AP as well as IB curriculum so I'm very well versed in both and understand the nature of those two different programs and how they're read in the admissions process um, I am a member of our you know national organizations um, our Western Associations of College Counseling, um, National Association of Independent Schools, and Association of College Counselors in, um, in independent schools as well. And of course, I have two children. I have a six-year-old girl and a 16-month-old boy. Uh, my daughter just finished kindergarten, looking forward to first grade in the fall. So that's a little bit about me. Let's go ahead and get started. You are listening to this webinar because you want to know more about the personal statement and the college essay, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're also going to talk about, um, you know, the, the, what colleges and universities are looking for, and that's not really an easy answer. This can be a, um, a very stressful part of the application for students, so hopefully the information that I give will, um, will help to uh, calm you and, and ease your fears a little bit and help you get started. Um, one of the things at the end of our presentation, um, because we have um, an unusually low number of participants today, we will have an opportunity for um, some direct question and answer sessions. And you do not have to be on video, but you will be able to ask those questions in real time, which will be really great. So um, if you have questions, you know, please write them down and, and be ready to ask those at the end. And, and we will um, talk about that in, in a few moments. So let's go ahead and get started. The purpose of the college essay, it's part of the colleges and universities comprehensive review. And what this means is that we all know colleges and universities are looking for grades, they're looking for the types of rigor in your classes that you are taking on, they're looking for extracurriculars, they're looking for um, you as a, as a whole person. And the purpose of the college essay is to give them that little bit of information that they're not going to be able to get from any other part of the application. So it is very important when you're writing your statement or your essay um, about something that they wouldn't otherwise get from that application that you submit. The essay provides information that supports and also supplements the review process. So again, it's going to help your admissions officer really uh, get to know you in a way that goes beyond just a transcript. You are more than just your grades and your test scores. So this, uh, hopefully that will help you to, to understand a little bit about the purpose of this essay. Um, and again, at the very end, it helps admissions officers know and understand the applicants in a different way. They're looking for students and how they're going to fit into their campus and what they're going to bring to the table. The benefits of the college essay is that it really gives you an opportunity to shine and to be more than just a name. Again, more than just that number, more than just that test score. Um, you have so much to offer it to the particular colleges and universities where you're applying that you want to make sure that you get that across. Within the college essay, you have a chance to share your personality, your goals, your experiences, and in some ways you can think of the essay as the written interview. So instead of doing a face-to-face -face interview, which not too many colleges offer an opportunity for, um, think of this as a way of, of being able to talk about yourself on paper. All right. Excuse me. 
So what are colleges and universities looking for? This is a tough one because a lot of students will ask, well, what do I need to write about? And really what you choose to write about is very, very particular to you and your background and your experiences. So you wanna make sure that you can show that you can write well, that you can um, you know, use punctuation and grammar and that you, you have a voice that shows um, that you know what you're talking about. They want to know who you are. So they're not looking for a specific topic on athletics or art. They're looking to know who you are, um, again, as a student who will be able to fit into their campus and to bring something extra and maybe exciting. And they're, they're looking to know about your background. So whatever you choose to write about, um, make sure you're confident in your choice um, and, and be happy about it. So it, the college essay in the statement, it's an opportunity to showcase who you are. So try not to get too nervous about it. You don't have to write about curing cancer or, you know, um, finding a way to have world peace. You can write about everyday ordinary things and make them transformational and really show um, who you are as, as a student and a young person. There are common types of college essays or questions, if you will. Um, you have the personal statement, which is basically tell us a little bit about your background, where do you come from, what is your world like. Um, and that gets really to the heart of the matter. Are you a student who struggles in school but has found a way to shine in certain areas? Are you a student who is, who is um, completely academic and loves to go to math competitions? So it's really about your, your background and, and who you are. Also, your favorite activity, that can come up. So you can always go back over your resume. You can think of the activities you've participated in the last few years, and you can really talk about um, that activity and what that means to you. And then, of course, um, you will most likely run across this one, which is why us? And so you would insert the name of the school there. So you could say why Stanford, why Rice University, um, why any particular university. And this is where you have to really dig deep and make sure that the, the college or university that uh, you're writing about um, knows they're more than just a rank and a name to you. And so you really have to make sure you know why you're applying um, to the school. So that's gonna be important for you to, to know. All right, so I'm sure many of you are going to be looking at the University of California. You may or may not know this, but they have recently changed um, their essay or their statement format. In the past, it used to be you would choose um, two questions, or they would give you two prompts rather, and you would have up to 1,000 words between those two prompts to um, write an answer. And one of the essays had to be no less than 250 wo words, excuse me. So they have changed it, and they've done some review, and they've done some research, and they've decided that they're gonna go ahead and offer now eight questions versus the two, and you can respond to four out of the eight. So you only have to pick half, and you can write on no more than 350 words per prompt. So you have four prompts that you must answer that you can choose of the eight, and each one is no more than 350 words. Um, it will remain to be seen how this is going to be used in the, in the process, but I can't believe that the UC system would introduce these without really believing in this format. So. You want to make sure that you take care to choose your prompts um, carefully and write on the ones that you really can write about and don't go over the 350 words. All right. So let's talk a little bit about those UC personal insight questions. That's what they are called. I didn't list all eight of them for you. You can actually go to the UC system website and look at the questions if you'd like. But mostly you're going to see words like describe and how. And that means that they want you to talk about not just tell, but you just have, you have to show through your essay. So describe the most significant challenge you have, you have and the steps you have taken to overcome this challenge. How has this challenge affected your academic achievement? So not only do they want you to describe the challenge, but then they want to talk about how it has affected you. So make sure that you always bring it back to you. Um, the other one is, what would you say is your greatest talent or skill? And this is an example of another question of the eight that you can answer. Again, how have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? Make sure that you are, are fully answering um, the, the two parts or, of, of the questions. For the common application, for those of you who are not familiar with the common application, it is actually um, rolled over and become live July 1st. So if you are a rising senior and looking forward to your um, application process in the fall, you can actually start your 
your account now with Common App. Common App is a, um, a, a platform for applications, if you will, that, oh, I would say probably about 700 colleges and, US, uh, colleges and universities around the U.S. are part of the Common Application. So if you are applying to um, private schools and even some of the larger public schools like the University of Michigan, um, the Ohio State University, they also utilize the Common Application. You can see on here that there are five different prompts. They ask you to choose one and write um, anywhere between 250 to 650 words. And you want to be careful that you don't go over the 650 words because uh, you do have to cut and paste your essay into a box. And uh, the Common App has been known to cut off essays after 650 words. So you want to be very careful and very clear and concise when you are choosing your prompt to, to write on. All right, so that's what the Common App essay prompts look like. And again, you can go to your, your Common App account and start that up now if you would like to do that. All right, so this is, this is the, the meat of it, how to start the college essay. You will you'll brainstorm, basically. So don't be surprised if this part of the process takes longer than expected. What that means is that do not expect to sit down and get your essay done in one sitting. Expect that you are going to have um, multiple drafts and you're going to have edits. So really expect to spend some time on this college essay, um, getting feedback from people and then also doing some revisions. So brainstorming. Um, lots of students have trouble with this. You can start by looking over the prompts from the UC application. You can look at the prompts from the Common App. You can um, organize them by making some bullet points under each prompt and then just see what flows. See what you will be able to expand upon and um, really describe and explain in your um, application. So find the one that, that speaks to you, but don't be surprised again if this takes longer than, than you normally expect. Allow yourself some time. Let your first draft flow. What this means is that just write, just write. Don't worry about structuring this like an essay for your English class, just let it flow. Just sit down with your, your, um, your computer, or if you like to handwrite, get that pencil, and just start writing. Bullet points, however it is that you want to get down the information that you want to share on that, on that paper. Um, and again, you will write um, many drafts. Um, and then get feedback. And this is important because it's good to have somebody that you trust um, read your essay. Now, be careful <clears throat> that you do not have too many people reading and editing and helping you revise. And that is because you do not want to lose your voice in this um, important part of the application process. It's also important to know parents that um, you want to be careful. If, if your mom or dad listening in on this webinar, um, try not to get too involved in the essay. Let your student um, seek out the help that they need. And it's great if you want to help and if they ask you to, but, but try not to overtake this process for them because remember, it's your student's voice. Um, you don't want to have your voice in there. And college admissions officers know what a 16, 17-year-old essay looks like and feels like versus a, an older parent's essay or writing. Okay, So get feedback, but be careful where you get it from, and don't get too much feedback from too many different people. All right, so some tips. Completing the application. Pay attention to the optional or recommended writing prompts. Um, what I tell my students is if it says optional, you have to do it. You really don't want to leave anything unsaid. You don't want to leave um, anything on the table that you could have answered and become, um, let them see more of you. So you want to make sure that this says optional or recommended. You go ahead and fill out that portion. So you might see these options for um, recommended or optional when you're on the common application under different sections for writing. So you want to be careful that you go ahead and fill those in. All right. Quality versus quantity. So when you write revealing concise essays, you want to make sure that you are uh, detailed and you're not throwing everything in. You want to make sure that if you're writing about your background, that you uh, pick a very specific part about your background, that you are very detailed and it's very revealing and it's concise. Um, sometimes students will write about um, somebody they admire, which is great. You could write about your mom, your dad, your grandparents, a historical figure, anybody, but you want to make sure that you are writing mostly about yourself and how that person affects you. 
because that person whom you admire is not the one attending the college, you are. So you want to make sure that you are clear, concise, to the point, and you're answering everything directly, okay? This is almost a, a creative piece of writing, if you will. It's not your traditional five paragraph essay, okay? Be yourself. That's the best piece of advice that I give all of my students. Just be yourself, write about what speaks to you, um, and if, if you feel it's important to you, then surely the admissions people are going to read this and feel the same way, okay? All right, and you also, again, want to answer each and every aspect of the essay question. So describe yourself, tell how it affects you. Again, a two-part um, prompt. So make sure you're describing the event, um, and then you're talking about how it has affected you. All right, in summary, so we're, we're getting there. So you want to make sure that um, colleges and universities have an opportunity to learn more about you. So the essay is an opportunity to humanize you in your overall application. Colleges and universities are going to see the same types of students year after year in every admission cycle. They're going to see high grades, they're going to see high test scores, they're going to see the typical maybe musicians and athletes and artists and uh, community volunteers, but they want to know what makes you different. So this is a time to showcase you. Do not be afraid to brag. I know it's hard for teenagers to do that. Um, you don't want to talk about yourself. You don't want to talk about what sets you apart, but this is the time you really need to do that. So um, take care to, to show um, the details that make you so wonderful and, um, and really just showcase who you are in the admissions process. All right. Okay, so a key recommendation that I would have would be to, to start early on this. If you are a rising senior, you do have time, but you have to get moving, okay? There, there is no delay here. Um, you should be logging into your application websites. Um, I believe the, the UC system website will open August 1st. Um, but of course, like I said, the, the common app application is, is open already July 1st. So if you are a rising senior, you can already start gathering information on your prompts and start the brainstorming now, okay? If you are a junior, most likely these prompts are not going to change. Um, sometimes they do from year to year, but you can start to get an idea of what these prompts look like. And then honestly, over the course of a year, you can start to maybe collect some information, jot down some ideas, but you certainly, as a current rising junior, do not have to start your essays right now. But seniors, this is it. This is the time, okay? So start early. All right, we're going to end up going to some questions. Let me see if I've got any, any questions. Um, see, I don't think I have any questions right now. All right, um, so... What I want to do is I want to uh, talk about a little bit more about some of the, um, uh, oh, I've got one right now. Can you please give some examples of a great essay for a UC like UCLA? Um, you know, that is a really good question. And again, a, a great essay is one that reflects your personal qualities, okay? One of the things that I would tell you is that the UC system as a whole really uh, supports first-generation students, they support students of color, uh, they support low-income students, so they, they're looking for um, students of all different backgrounds. So if you are a student who has a really interesting background, I would say go ahead and highlight that. Um, there used to be a question for the UC system that said, what is your world and, and where do you come from? Talk about it. So that is a really unique opportunity to talk about who you are um, and how you're going to fit into the UC system. Now, keep in mind that when you are writing these essays for the UC system as well as the common application, they will go to all of the colleges where you apply within that application. So the four of the eight insight questions that you answer for UC Berkeley will also go to UCLA will also go to UC San Diego, will also go to UC Merced, okay? For the common application, that one general essay, the one that was between 250 and, 200 and 650 words, that will also go to all of your colleges. It will go to Stanford, it will go to Carnegie Mellon, it will go to Rice, it will go to every college where you are applying through the common app. So you wanna make sure that when you are writing those essays, you're not writing it for a specific institution. 
on the common application, that's where in the supplemental section, that's where you'll have an opportunity to really talk about the colleges and universities um, that you're, you're interested in. So Stanford always asks uh, students to, in their supplement, to write an essay to their future roommate. So that is, um, that is something that you know, students will do specifically for Stanford, okay? All right, here is another uh, question. When is a good time to start writing essays for rising seniors? Now, start collecting that information now. Get your essay prompts together. Um, hopefully you've got a little bit of a list crafted already so that you can start um, um, doing some detective work and figuring out what those essay prompts are. Okay, so make sure that you are, are getting going now and don't delay. And, and UC Easy counselors are ready and willing to help you with that editing and revision process. Um, you start with the ideas and then we can help you craft that into something that's something really, really exciting. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on a little bit to talk about um, if you need some more information and more help, and I just mentioned that the UC Easy counselors are here to help you with the, with the essays. We have plenty of help, not just with essays, but in other areas. So if you wanna schedule some more time with me, or um, find another counselor that will work for you, you can go ahead and, and visit union.uceasy.com. You can also email us at info at uceasy.com as well. And that information is there on your screen. Okay, so the next steps. Um, if you are interested in scheduling an hour of consultation, you can, oops, and I have the incorrect date up there, I apologize. So you can schedule an extra 30 minutes if you order by midnight tomorrow, which would be July 18th. Um, and you can also visit the union and select initial consultation and get a free 30 minutes, um, no obligation, no financial obligation there, and just uh, pick a counselor and, um, and, and meet them for 30 minutes. Okay? Another option is if you are unsure, you can schedule a free 30 minute um, getting acquainted session. Oh, I had those backwards, I apologize. Um, the one hour of consultation, Option one is an extra 30 minutes if you order by midnight tomorrow. And then option two, of course, is if you still are unsure, you can go ahead and schedule a free 30-minute getting acquainted session. Option two is free. Option one um, does require an hour of, of time, but you'll get that extra 30 minutes. Either way, you can go to initial consultation or getting acquainted through union.uceasy.com. All right, or you can, if you know you're ready to go, you can go ahead and buy a block of hours based upon your, your grade and your needs. So if you are that rising senior and you're working on that essay, it might be a good idea to go ahead and buy some block of time and get that counselor locked in um, so that they will be working with you um, as you head back to school as a senior in the fall and working on helping you craft that essay. These are the recommended blocks. Um, if you are in grades eight and nine, you have some time. Um, it's recommended about three hours for eighth grade and in, in uh, ninth grade, about five hours with a counselor. And again, in these areas, we will do course selections, talk to you about your extracurriculars, summer planning, and maybe help you start to identify some careers or majors or some interest areas that might become um, you know, courses of study when you get to university. If you're in 10th grade, again, you have a little bit of time still, but you're starting down that path towards college. We would recommend about 10 hours. Again, course selection, extracurricular, summer planning. Um, you know, this is where we start to have conversations about testing and um, looking at a potential college list. If financial aid is going to be a, um, a need for you. And so the other thing too, is if you are looking at AP and IB courses, 10th grade is a really good time to start talking to a counselor to figure out what your IB curriculum will be in junior and senior year. Um, or even with APs, should you take the, you know, the, um, the AP English and the AP foreign language and how many APs are too many. So we can have a really great discussion about the APs um, as you head into 11th and 12th grade. And then of course in 11th grade, we actually would recommend 20 hours. This is the year, this is when it all starts. So you wanna make sure you're ready to go. You've got a plan in place. And those are some of the um, the items that we can help you with, the, the application process, the summer planning, the essays we're talking about today, the majors, the college list, and, and all of that information down there. The junior year is when it really kicks off, so you don't want to wait too long to get started with your, with your college plan, and we can definitely help you, that, help you with that. Of course, you can also attend the UC Easy free events. We have webinars like you're attending today. We have uh, past webinars that have been recorded that are also at uceasy.com backslash events. 
And if you are a parent, you can invite us for an on-site workshop at your workplace. So again, just email us at info at ucz.com. All right, so while you're filling out that feedback form that Vinny is going to put up, um, I'm going to look and see if we have any more questions. And let's see, let's go back to that feedback so, form. So Katie, while yes. before, uh, uh, just to warm up everyone so that they start asking questions. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, again, for the attendees, like Katie said, if any one of you would like to ask your questions live via mm -hmm. audio or video, just send us a text and we would Brave you to a panelist uh, uh, for the brave ones. Uh, so, uh, but in the meantime, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Katie, I think there's a perfect question from one of the attendees. I do, I do see that. Do you want to answer that right now? Yes, please. Great. So it says, how much time should a rising senior uh, be spending on essays? Well, it depends on where you're applying, and that's not an easy question to to answer. So. Um, I have had students who spend the bulk of their time, um, meaning they, they don't spend the first part of their application process on the application, they go right to the essays. I've had some students who are amazing writers and words just appear on paper and it's very easy for them. So you need to do a really good self-assessment and figure out, okay, what kind of writer am I? Um, do I take a long time? Do I have a hard time getting started? So it's, it's hard to quantify saying you should be spending 50 or 60 percent of your time. But what I would say is um, a good way to do this is as you're heading into the college application season, keep that in the forefront of your mind for your essays and work on them a little bit each day. Um, you know how you work best. So again, avoiding that cramming session the night before the application is due, you know, uh, chunk out your time. You've got four essays to write, um, you know, spend 30 minutes a day on your essays and start now because this is the summer and once the fall starts you're going to be really busy getting into your classes and all your activities so i would really encourage you um, and, and highly encourage to get started now on those but try and chunk it out that would be some some good suggestion is to maybe spend 30 minutes a day on your your rough draft um you know and doing some revisions so all right there is another question. How many essays are required by a typical top tier private college? Vinny, I'm gonna ask you, do you remember how many essays your son wrote for University of Chicago? I think, Katie, it was uh, one primary along with the Common App and I think two supplements. Yep, and that's pretty common. Um, I can tell you that you know Wake Forest University um, is a very, very good college in North Carolina. It's in that research triangle of UNC, Chapel Hill, uh, Duke and Wake Forest. Wake Forest is test optional. So they have um, nine short answer essay questions. Because they do not rely on uh, ACT or SAT test scores in their admissions, they're going to ask you nine supplements. So I would say if you are looking at writing for UC, you have at least four. Then you have the Common App, which is at least one general one, and then maybe two to three supplements per college. So you will be writing. You will be writing a lot. Um, you could be writing up to 10, depending on how many um, colleges or universities where you apply. Uh, when is the best time to complete my essays given the application deadlines of October, November, and December? If you are going to apply early action or early decision, we know those applications are typically due November 1st. So you want, again, you want to make sure that you're starting those essays now um, and, and don't wait. Um, you know, start start now in the summer before you go back to school. Even if you're just getting some rough drafts together or an outline or bullet points down, start writing now. Um, and then a good question is, do essays matter in admissions for top tier public colleges like the UC, University of Washington, Michigan, et cetera? And I would say the essays matter um, very much because when you think about it, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of applicants um, applying to the UCs, for example, um, how are you going to stand out? If many of the applicants look the same in terms of, you know, uh, in-depth extracurriculars, if they, the applicants all have great scores and rigorous courses, how are you going to set yourself apart in that? It's going to be through your essays. So I would say um, maybe even more so for those large public universities that are very popular and top tier, you really want to make sure you're taking the time to write. Um, because you need to, to showcase yourself and, and show why you should be accepted to that, that university. Um, 
Uh, okay, another good question. I've heard that UCs don't look at essays at all and only GPA and scores. And I think that's a myth that's out there. Um, believe me, the UC system would not waste their time asking students to fill in or answer four out of eight questions if they didn't want to read those. UC Berkeley actually hires outside readers to help them with all the applications. So take them very seriously. And yes, the application for the UC system um, is very detailed. They want to make sure that you have all of your courses listed, all of your grades. Those items very much matter, but you definitely need to take your time on those UC um, insight questions because um, if it didn't matter, they wouldn't ask. Trust me, everything they ask on every part of that application is important. So take it seriously. It does matter. Yep. Uh, Kitty, if I can just add uh, a few things to uh, that question. So the first is that uh, a few weeks back, we had a webinar. Mm -hmm. A recording of that is actually available on uceasy.com backslash events. The topic uh -huh. was how does an admissions officer think? And the speaker was a current admissions officer from UC Berkeley. Uh, and so this is, guys, this is directly from the horse's mouth. This guy over the last seven years has read hundreds of essays and applications at UC Berkeley. So I would urge you to listen to his webinar, his presentation, again, uceasy.com backslash events, and look for how does an admissions officer think. Uh, the summary, though, is that essays matter. Mm -hmm. it matter they matter hugely mm -hmm. because like Katie said, they have no other way of differentiating you, of knowing who you are outside your metrics, which is your GPS scores and whatever written on your transcripts and test scores. So, but that I would say from our webinars, personally, I think it was one of the best ones because mm -hmm. we were getting all of these myths, like Katie said, addressed by, directly by somebody who is sitting at UC Berkeley. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a couple more questions. And if a student writes a great essay, but his or her SAT scores lower generally than accepted for the UC system, you know, if, if you feel like that you have extraordinary circumstances, um, whatever that may be, um, use that to talk about why. I always tell students, you don't ever want to leave um, holes in your application. And you don't ever want the admissions officer to look at your application and say, huh, this is a red flag. I don't understand. You want to make sure that you are using every single part of that application to explain who you are um, and your circumstances. So, um, you know, is an essay going to make or break an application? I don't know. It really depends. Um, and so you need to treat it that it's, it's, it's an important part of your essay. Um, again, you are more than just a number. You are more than a test score. You are more than a GPA. So show that through your essay. Um, and, and write from the heart and then just let the chips fall where they may. Another question is how much weighting does extracurriculars have on UC apps? Again, all things being equal, grades, test scores for students, how does the college or university or how does the UC system know um, what kind of student you are? You know, what, what are the things that interest you? And they're looking for students to really bring those activities to life on the UC campus. So if you are a student who is really involved in leadership or community service, they're hoping that you're going to go ahead and, and continue with those activities when they get when you get to their campus. So as far as how much weight is it 50% 60% I mean I don't have a number for you but I know it's very important because the colleges are looking to see where you spend your time outside of school and that really reveals character. So you want to you want to make sure that you're listing those in order and you're giving great detail. Um, and if one of those insight questions lends itself to talking about one of your activities, then go ahead and do that. Okay, all right. Um, is it true that UCs only look at extracurriculars if the GPA in scores are high? Again, you know, I would say that that's not true. Um, the colleges are looking at everything holistically in the UC system. Again, you know, UC Berkeley hires outside readers to look at applications, so they do really feel that every part of that is important. Um, certainly, if a student is, is much lower than the, the normal accepted um, mid, middle 50%, then, you know, it, it's going to be tough. But if you're right there within that middle 50%, then they are definitely going to look at your extracurriculars to see what else you bring to the table. Uh, remember, not every Smarties Pants student is going to make an excellent 
college student. Students who are awesome on campus and contribute are those who are involved outside of school, involved in school activities, um, that have, have a life more than just their academics. So again, be who you are, reveal who you are through your essays, um, and, and just you know, write from the heart and, and do the best that you can. And the right college is gonna pick up on that and they're gonna accept you and it's gonna be wonderful. So, um, let's uh, Katie, see. Katie, can I just, on the UC sure. stuff, if I can just quickly add that, uh, remember guys, I talked about how we had these completely free applications in Toolbox. So if you go to our site, uh, Toolbox tab, there is a free app there called Explore. And what Explore does is that it's a very simple tool where you provide the child's or the student's school and county. So in most of, most of your case, it'll be Santa Clara and the school and uh, provide the standardized test scores and uh, the GPA. And you can get a reasonably good guidance in terms mm -hmm. of which UCs can, your student can get into or Cal State Universities. Mm -hmm. Now, please don't, uh, as a caution, please don't take this as the 100% truth. Mm -hmm. because as we've been saying that there are non-quantitative factors that UCs mm -hmm. consider. So I would say use these for about 90% or so guidance in terms of UCs and Cal States. There will be a lot more deterministic for California State Universities like San Jose State because most of these campuses do not consider qualitative factors in their admissions. So uh, there, there's another tool for you uh, 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 just to play around to get a approximate guidance. It right, yeah, you know, and, and the last thing I'll mention as far as extracurriculars, is that something that you, again, you can talk about in your insight questions. And if you are, for example, trying to do engineering at Berkeley or UCLA, um, you know, they wanna see that you've got some consistency in your background, that you're not just choosing engineering all of a sudden and it doesn't make any sense. Hopefully you are a strong math student, you've been participating in math competitions, you're doing exploratory engineering programs throughout the summer, so you're doing everything that kind of makes sense. So that's part of your extracurricular activities that they're looking for, is why does the student wanna do engineering? Um, and can we see that they really wanna do it based on the activities where they've been involved? So you wanna be able to highlight a, that as well. Um, a question on Cal State schools like Cal Poly. Um, they have their, their admissions process as well. This is kind of a general question, so I'm not really sure what to answer. How is the admissions process? Uh, I could actually answer that. Sure. Because Do you know what, what they're coming, where they're coming from? <laughs> okay. I, I, I do because, uh, okay. because the algorithm for that uh, college predictor, I wrote that algorithm. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so guys, so the high, uh, I'm not going to go, uh, if you get me talking, I'll be here for three hours. Uh, <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that. So California State University campuses, there are 23 campuses. Uh, um, one of them uh, for marine uh, studies is very niche. The remaining 22 campuses, essentially what they do is that they look for something called eligibility index, yes. which is a quantitative or a formulaic combination of your GPA and mm -hmm. test scores, regardless of whether you've taken SAT or ACT. Mm -hmm. The second key criteria is what is the notion of a local zone. Mm -hmm. So those 22 campuses, they, most of them provide preferential or guaranteed mm -hmm. access to something called a local zone. For example, for us in Santa Clara County, San Jose State will offer us preferential admissions. Until last year, it used to be guaranteed admissions. Now it's preferential, but San Francisco State offers a guarantee that admissions provided the student meets an eligibility index of 2,900, right? Now there are, uh, uh, there are some super competitive, what are, what are called fully impacted campuses, yes. where the demand is much higher than capacity. Uh, San Jose State, San Diego mm -hmm. State, Cal Poly Pomona, they don't consider extracurriculars, but uh, sometimes specific to certain majors, might ask you for certain kind of coursework, et cetera. So that's where it gets complicated and you need somebody like Katie in your corner to research all that stuff. So that's the complex thing. But uh, the good news here is that if your child is eligible and meets the local criteria, at least five campuses in, in California give guaranteed admissions guys. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, the reason I, I love to say that is to reduce pressure on the parents and students that worst case, you have five homes available. 
Yeah, you know, and that and that's it. It's the eligibility in the local context. Um, I believe on that sliding scale, if you have a 3.0, they don't really look at even your SAT or ACT. So yeah, you know, the the CSUs are very numbers driven, and that's just kind of how it works. And um, the the student or the participant clarified there is no essay, and that is true. There is no essay for the CSU system. So. It can be a little bit harder to differentiate, but you want to make sure you're using that whole application, every single part of it, um, to go ahead and explain your circumstances. If there's any spot for, for you to say um, anything else you want to tell us, essentially, then you want to make sure you do that. The other thing you can do is the schools where you have uh, targeted and you want on your list, um, call them and start talking to them. And that's showing, again, that interest. You're getting to know the admissions rep. Um, and, and don't be just a number. Put, put a uh, name uh, to your face and go and visit them during admissions fairs. Um, call them on the phone, find their email address. Um, every college and university for the most part has a representative for a certain geographical area. So get to know who, you, who your rep is for your college that you're interested in and um, start asking them some, some really good meaty questions and, and make sure that you um, identify yourself and they, they start to know who you are in that process. So, all right, I think we are, da, 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 we are pretty much out of questions. This has been really great. Yes, definitely check out your impacted majors on the CSU website. Um, CSU Mentor, I believe, is, is where you can go and you can check out um, all that information. Um, all right, last question. I'm going to be on vacation for two weeks, and this is a very important time to work on essays. Any tips? Good question. Um, I always encourage my students to take a notebook with them wherever they go, and this sounds very cheesy, um, but you might be sitting in the back of the car while you're on a driving vacation. Take out that notebook and start writing down ideas, and so you can do some brainstorming. Um, type into your phone, however you guys deal with technology these days. Um, start writing down your ideas. You don't have to wait until you get back, but um, start keeping notes. And when you're brainstorming and ideas just come to you, make sure you're writing those down. And by the time you get back from vacation, you're going to have some good information to start working with. So hopefully that can get you, get you started on that. So, all right. And hopefully you've had a chance to fill out the feedback form. Um, and the last slide we have is just a thank you and you can like us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter and you can also contact us at info at ucezy.com. If you'd like again to book more time with a UC Easy counselor, please contact us and we will be happy um, to start working with you in, in your college planning, no matter the, the grade level in, that you're in now. So um, thank you so much for attending today and taking your time out on this beautiful day. Um, and if there's anything else from Vinny, I think um, it's time yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, I just want to quickly add that uh, next Sunday we would have a webinar on transfers. Oh, so good. in your family and friends network, if there is current students that are looking for transfers from a four-year college to a four-year college or from a community college to a four-year college, uh, please pass the word around. The second is that uh, over the next month or so, we would have a string of on-site webinars in Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, in Milpitas, in Livermore, in Cupertino, Sunnyvale. So um, uh, we will be, uh, since we have your emails and your permission to uh, email you, uh, we would be sending you flyers for those. So please be on the lookout for those. But with that, uh, Katie, thank you so much for your time. And thanks everyone for attending. It's always a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and have a great weekend. Thanks everyone. Have a great week. Bye for now.